we have seen versions of artificial intelligence in movies for longer than we've been doing artificial intelligence research. And it makes sense. From thrillers to horror movies, artificial intelligence represents one of the things that we all fear on some level. Losing our place at the top of the animal kingdom to something that is smarter than us, is faster than us, and has the ability to control us in ways that we might not be able to escape from. Or does it? Of course, movies that talk about artificial intelligence are taking a certain number of creative liberties as they're usually science fiction, so they probably aren't intending to faithfully represent exactly what AI is and what AI isn't. But if we never critiqued movies on whether they faithfully represented the human experience, CinemaSins and a good part of YouTube would not exist. So today we're going to talk about how movies get AI wrong, looking at five broad tropes. Throughout the video, we're also going to talk about specific movies and their portrayals of AI and how they might improve them if they were to remake those films, which they won't. Our first trope is confusing AI and AGI. Some of you have actually asked in the comments for me to do a video on AGI or artificial general intelligence because it's this topic that we hear about as the final step for AI development. It's the point at which an artificial intelligence algorithm develops the so-called knowledge of a human or better than a human. And our fear, generally, is that it's also the point where it takes over the world and makes us subservient to it. Now, this is seen in almost every movie that has AI in it. Some examples would be iRobot, 2001 A Space Odyssey, but basically there are tons and tons and tons of examples of this trope. The problem is that AI and AGI aren't the same thing. As we've talked about in my video on how AI works, the goal of artificial intelligence research is to replicate certain aspects of human intelligence. But not all human intelligence is complicated, and it's definitely not the same as artificial general intelligence or a model that could perform well on several very, very different tasks. That's the big problem with developing AI. We can make a model that's really good at diagnosing your illness or figuring out what you'd like to see next on your newsfeed, but we don't have a model that can do both. So the whole concept of an AI that would take over the world only works if you assume that it's AGI, which is A, very rarely discussed in films, and B, is often discussed as if it's happening right now, when we are nowhere close to that. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a whole video that essentially debunks AGI. Along those lines, our second trope is AI that defies its user. This can definitely be seen in movies like Ex Machina, as well as in the Tron movies, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and many others. Essentially, this trope is where an AI system develops a mind of its own and goals of its own and decides to pursue those goals which are often in conflict with our human goals. When we talk about AI algorithms, we talk about algorithms that have been designed to learn how to perform a specific task, or hopefully multiple specific tasks if we're talking about AGI. But if you trained an algorithm to, for instance, again, diagnose illness, how would it come up with its own goals that fly so directly in conflict with what you're trying to do? This isn't to say it isn't possible, but it doesn't typically happen in the way that we see it with something like a sci-fi movie, where an AI decides that it would rather kill off all of humanity than help us live better, happier lives. The places where we actually might see something like this is where we just don't see statistical connections in our data sets that lead to an outcome that actually contradicted what we had originally tried to do. A really interesting example of this is actually a recent report on a medical treatment software that uses artificial intelligence algorithms to essentially recommend treatments to patients. One of the goals of the algorithm was to give treatments to patients that they would be able to afford. So if someone had gone bankrupt after being given some treatment in the past, the algorithm might be a little less likely to recommend that treatment if there was some other comparable treatment that costs less money. 
Now the problem with this that the developers didn't realize at the time is that there are disparities in how people spend money on healthcare. And they correlate to socioeconomic class, which also tends to correlate with race. So instead of providing all patients with the best care and ideally eliminating those sorts of racial disparities, the model actually introduced racial disparities in treatment plans by recommending cheaper and less effective treatments to poorer people because the data that the model had been trained on said that those people wouldn't be able to afford the more expensive treatment. Specifically, this led to white patients getting better treatment than black patients. Now, would you say that this system defied its user? No, not necessarily. It did do what it was asked to do. The task was to predict treatment based on both what the patient has, their patient history, and how much the treatment costs. But what we didn't realize it would do in the process is unintentionally marginalize certain populations based on the fact that lower income people just don't spend as much money on health care because they can't. Our third trope, which is omnipresent AI. The idea that once an algorithm can perform enough tasks, one of those tasks is being able to, I guess, travel through the internet and get itself into every computer in existence so that it can surveil us from any piece of technology that exists. Now, I'm not saying that it's not possible to spread computer viruses. We all know that that's definitely possible. But the idea of an all-knowing, all-seeing artificial intelligence system is definitely a trope that would have to be directed by humans. And we're seeing this in some places in the world, specifically China. So while it's definitely possible, it takes real human work and real human direction to get it there, which is not usually what happens in the movies. Our fourth trope is actually a bit similar to the artificial general intelligence trope, and it's AI versus robots. This is also something that we see a lot in media coverage of artificial intelligence systems, the difference between AI and automation. In short, we've been automating things for a really long time. We've been automating things since, you know, the first automated factory line came out in the 1900s. But artificial intelligence, especially in the economic sense, is a lot newer. Similarly, just because we're talking about robots doesn't mean we're talking about AI. Most of the cases where we see AI and robots used interchangeably is when we talk about humanoid robots, as we do in Avengers Age of Ultron, Ex Machina, Tron Legacy, iRobot. You could argue her, although it's less of a humanoid and more of an Alexa. And I'm sure there are many, many other examples of humanoid intelligent robots. The main important distinction that I'd like to make here is that a robot does not necessarily use artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence is not necessarily a robot. They're not interchangeable terms. So when we talk about robots taking over the world, similar to AI, they won't do anything that we didn't tell them to. Luckily with robots, unless you're using an artificial intelligence system to guide it, it's a bit easier to specifically pinpoint the task that you want a robot to complete and tell it to do it because robots tend to follow rules-based logic. And finally, our last one is emotionally intelligent AI systems. Now, this one I think is actually interesting because you see it a lot in films where someone falls in love with a humanoid robot or falls in love with their smart personal assistant, as in the movie Her. And a lot of it comes from the fact that the systems that have artificial intelligence integrated into them that we use in our daily lives are often personified. There's actually a really interesting report from the United Nations on how using female voices and personal assistants impacts our interactions with real women especially considering some interesting reporting on how these systems react if you treat them poorly. In short, using a female voice in a personal assistant system tends to reinforce negative biases towards women. However, when we see emotionally intelligent artificial intelligence systems in movies, interestingly enough, they're almost always women, and they actually don't tend to be as subservient as we'd see them in our daily lives. Most of these movies end up with the artificial intelligence humanoid robot tricking a man into falling in love with it and then using it as leverage to complete whatever malicious goal it has. But just a reminder, 
artificial intelligence systems are not emotionally intelligent. If you fall in love with Siri, you should talk to somebody about that because Siri does not love you back and you should probably go outside more. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Comment below with other AI tropes that you've seen in movies. Also stay tuned for a bunch of videos that I'm really excited about for the rest of 2016. There have been a couple projects that I've been working on for a while now behind the scenes that are either topics that I just really wanted to do well and make sure I got expert opinions on or are more project-based videos where I had a lot more fun and created something that I think you guys are going to really enjoy. So if you haven't already, you should subscribe to my channel, smash that like button, and click the bell to turn on your notifications so that you know whenever I post a video. As always, thank you to all of my patrons for supporting this channel as well as everyone else for watching. If you'd like to support my channel and get access to monthly Q&A live streams, the next one is actually this, no next Saturday, so you have time if you'd like to join before the next live stream, as well as behind the scenes vlogs and just general updates on how the channel works, then you can go to patreon.com slash everydayai to support me there. Otherwise, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm at Jordan B. Harrod on everything, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.